Hey guys! How are you guys doing today? My name is Malika. And my name is Courtney. And you are watching The Greens. So today we wanted to come to you guys with a different type of topic through a conversation, just a simple conversation with you guys. And today we will be talking about... Yeah, so today we're talking about should you have opposite sex friends mm -hmm. um, and be in communication with the opposite sex while being single or being married. Ooh. Yeah, so That's I think it's one one. that, right? Yeah. I think it's one that doesn't necessarily get talked about too often, yeah. but it's something that will produce so much fruit in your in your marriage and really shifted the tone for our relationship yeah. you know and the reason why we uh said single or marriage is because even if you're dating someone <clears throat> we believe the purpose of dating is marriage right. so if you're dating someone you should be doing the same thing when it comes to honoring the opposite sex and then honoring your your significant other yeah. when it comes to communicating with the opposite sex and right. setting boundaries around that area when it comes to the opposite sex mm -hmm. so uh people that are dating and people that are engaged you guys are not off the hook this is for you <laughs> but we just want to properly equip you guys or help to properly equip you guys to get into marriage yeah so so let's say someone is single then how yeah. would you say this kind of like caters to them when it comes to the opposite sex and being in communication with them 100 percent. i believe yeah. uh first and foremost don't get too comfortable I uh, don't get too comfortable because me personally growing up like you know I had female friends and it was innocent mm -hmm. but also women and men are designed to be attracted to one another like mm -hmm. that's how God made it in the beginning it was yeah. they were designed to be attracted to each other so I'm gonna ask one question would your future husband or your future wife be happy at the conversation that you guys are having with the opposite sex friend right and i'm not saying having friends is a bad thing when you're a single person i am not saying that but yeah. what i am saying what are those conversations about yeah. we have to be very careful because for me i was a super like uh, you know like god gave me like the gift of encouragement so for me before i got saved I used to just give everyone's encouragement, mm -hmm. uplift them, and I text, you know, young females. And even if they were my friends, I like edified them, like, no, nah, like you're greater than that, all of yeah. this stuff. And then next thing you know, they may even start to have emotions for me because right. they are like, yo, this person is one of the only people who actually speak life into me, mm -hmm. and I kind of like that. Matter of fact, it would be good to have that person a part of my life seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of, we see, you know, through our YouTube family, we see a lot of people actually start to fall in love with their friend. She was my friend, and I mm -hmm. fell in love with her. Yeah. That's why it's very important that you got to be very strict around the boundaries you set when it comes yeah. to opposite sex friends mm -hmm. that's what i was gonna say too like even even when being single like there was a period of time where i did have a few male friends yeah. but i was also very strict on like the level of access that these yeah. people had to yes. me and so there also has to be like malachi said that level of boundaries like there could be a boundary for almost anything yeah. but just in a, another way to protect your heart because like you yeah. said with encouragement you just never know how on the receiving end that person is going to you know receive that information or take it yeah. and then it could potentially like someone could end up being hurt or yeah. feelings are there and it's just like oh my gosh i didn't intend for this to be like that and so i just think that you have to protect yourself even in that single season when it comes to the opposite sex yeah 100 percent. it's all about when it, when it comes to being single and mm -hmm. having the opposite sex friends i'm not saying that it's not okay but what i am saying is have boundaries have strict mm -hmm. boundaries because when you get when you find your future husband or when you find your future wife mm -hmm. we we want you guys to actually expose to them the parts that no one else really seen yeah. outside of like you know your women friends your same sex friends maybe have mm -hmm. seen it but we shouldn't be telling all of our all of the beautiful things about us to just a regular friend right. like you know what's your love language i told corny do not tell me your love language <laughs> on a friend when i first met her yeah. i was like hey look you know that that conversation of love languages i don't want to talk about that yeah. why because that's an easy way for a man to manipulate a woman right. if i knew her love language let's say if, if it was gifts at the time if if, if i knew your love language was, was gifts mm -hmm. i'm gonna get you gifts every day right. and that's gonna be an easy so way to get her in 
super manipulative and i'm not saying that all you know well what if my friend not manipulative i'm just saying you know protect your heart guard your heart yes. guard your mind guard your eyes because nine times out of ten when you have the opposite sex friend you guys are end up complimenting each other you guys are end up encouraging each other mm -hmm. and then it can lead to something that you may not even want it to go in that direction mm -hmm. now we do believe that it's okay to have you know like that one guy friend you're a single person and you may be interested and at first you guys are friends that's great you know but don't be having you know three four five six seven eight yeah. different guys in a church and you just like oh no nah, these are these are my it's bros innocent. and another thing too i want to mention because then you guys may be thinking like i know you guys teach on friendship before you know dating as us we were great friends and Not so seven friends right yeah. and so you guys may oppose that question it's like okay well then when is it okay and then that's when i believe that it all just ties back to the lord yeah. and how much like that relationship with the lord we yeah. seek counsel from him like yeah. i didn't have all these friends in my phone when i what i said earlier i'm referencing like high school yeah but malachi he was literally like the only male friend yeah. that i had that i was really closely in communication yeah. with yeah. at the time and so when those feelings that arise it was just like oh okay, that's when I had to counsel with the Lord and etc. Yeah. Not that it was like this whole field yeah. of men that now yeah. you're confused by because they have all of these outlets mm -hmm. to get directly to you. Yeah. Young men, go find some, some strong, bold men who can mentor you, train you up, mm -hmm. disciple you, pour into you, speak life into you. Young ladies, go get around some women of the faith yeah. who are on fire for the Lord, who teach you how to honor and love your future spouse. Mm -hmm. Hang around that. Like, again, we are not saying that um, having opposite sex friends are bad, right. but what we are saying is, please set some boundaries. Yeah. Ask yourself, like, you know what? You know, I had this amount of people on my phone, mm -hmm. you know, this amount of friends. These are all great guys. These are all cool people. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these are my brother's friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But what are these conversations about? Right. Where are these conversations leading? Mm -hmm. um, how do I feel when I'm conversing? Do I feel like kind of like, ooh, like, do I feel like I'm being complimented? Do I right. feel cute? Do I feel attractive? Do I feel handsome? Mm -hmm. Does she make me feel strong? Like, what what are these conversations making me feel like? Yeah. And what are these conversations all about? And then again, everything we say, please go back to Jesus and mm -hmm. counsel with him. Because this, this information may not be for everyone on this thing. Yeah. But we know we needed a video like this to teach us yeah. how to protect and how to honor our future spouse. Right. Cause we wanted to honor our future spouse. I wanted yeah. to honor her before I met her. So when I get in front of her, I don't have to explain nothing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now what can we say to the people who are married? The people who are married, this is a humongous <laughs> one. I'm gonna say one thing and I'm gonna let you go and yeah. kind of take it away. But when you are married, fellas, I'm, I'm gonna start with you guys. When it comes to texting a coworker, mm -hmm. you know, a friend from the church, especially you're in leadership, you know, sometimes you, you be in communication with the other people, you know, when you're in communication with the opposite sex, whether it's email, whether it's for work, whether it's for ministry, whether it's for school, whatever it's for, is your wife included? Yeah. And if she's not included, then why is she not included? Because that's your wife. You guys are one. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? A lot of people are like, bro, like this is my workplace. I ain't, my wife can't be. No, like you include your wife. I, I heard a story with Billy Graham and they said that in this man, like, come on, like he, he's with hundreds of thousands of people in ministry, yeah. but he would not <clears throat> step on an elevator with the opposite sex. That's beautiful. That's like he another would, level of. That's this. what I'm trying to get. <laughs> I am trying to get on that level, and I, I, I can be on that level now, to be honest yeah. with you, but, like, I am on that level, to be honest. If y'all know me, y'all know me. You also like to sit in another room with another female, no. I am not there. Nope. Like, it's beautiful. Nope. I had a meeting with a young lady I was about to uh, preach with on a panel, yep. and I made sure my wife was right in the back, Present. not because I didn't trust her. She's the homie. She's family. Right. She's both of our, me, me and my wife kind of friend in a way, yeah. don't have her contact information. But when we had a meeting, my wife was in the back doing her work and I was right there sure talking to the young present. lady, yeah. 100%. And anytime I text someone, she's included. If it's the opposite sex. If it's the opposite sex, she's included. Anytime I email someone, she's included. Or we, well, we have the same email now, but yeah. she's included. You know, anytime I'm on a phone call, I make sure my wife is 
present, near, um, mm -hmm. or even maybe on a call or something like that. Yeah. So I want to ask you guys, how do you, the conversation that you are having with the opposite sex, mm -hmm. would you still be having that conversation if your spouse was present? Yeah. And if you would not be question. having that conversation when your spouse is present, now you got to examine that heart and ask why. Yeah. You got to examine that heart when you ask why because a lot of men, you know, you know, you could be a little smooth and be like, yeah, you know, ah, oh, man. Would you be making those face through questions? Ah, oh, man, right. you know, like you your know. your wife was in the room. Come on. So. If your wife was in the room, would you do it? And if you would not, then we have to take a step back. So the yeah. moral of everything, anything you do with the opposite sex, when it comes to communication, when it comes to work, when it comes to ministry, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you what can help so much, when it can help with trusting, when it can help yeah. with um, freedom in your marriage, when it can help with not even letting the enemy get away in the door. Because some, you know, some of us men, we have been growing in the faith and we have amazing self-control. The thing is, other people may not have that same self-control that we have. You may be the only Christian guy at your job and you're communicating with an unbeliever and she's looking at you like, Man, he's assertive, he's strong, he's bold, he's, you know, he's handsome, he's dressed well, all of the stuff. Man, you know, he, and he's emailing me, hey, do you want to go out for, you know, a drink? And it's like, I don't, oh, now you got to reply, oh, I don't drink. And now you guys are back and forth and your wife is not even present. Right. Now you feel scared to even communicate this with your wife when your wife should have been added to this all along. And yeah. we know that this is a hard conversation to have with you guys. <laughs> I know. Uh, some of you guys may have seen that video, Hard Conversations, yeah. but we don't care. We want to help couples in every way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to agree, but we, we really believe that a lot of marriages end up in divorce because of sexual immorality. So what about you? When it comes to, um, you know, should I have an opposite sex friend mm -hmm. in, within my marriage or dating or engagement? Yeah. For me, I would ask I would ask that person like why? Like what is the root of that? Why do you feel like it is necessary? And some people may then say like, oh, we well we've been friends for such a long time and homies for a long time. And then I would say like, is your spouse okay with that? Is your husband or your wife, whichever the role, like are they okay with that? Because yeah. if it comes down to if it comes down to it's making them uncomfortable, regardless of the duration of that friendship, you should be willing to put an end to it as soon like whatever it is that makes your spouse uncomfortable say it like because now you are with them yeah. you're no longer homies and this and that you know That's like it, to me it's just like i don't care if, it, if that was your high school friends or whichever <laughs> the case it's just like if it makes me uncomfortable i'm going to do that out of respect for you yeah you know i'm not going to put you in a situation where it's almost like you're you're placing this other, other level of respect on your friend opposed to your spouse when it should start in the home and so yeah, if it doesn't make them comfortable, if it's not something that they are comfortable with, then you should be willing to put an end to it. And another thing too is just pra practice that honesty with one another. Have that open conversation with one another and just be like, hey, are you comfortable with this? Are you not? Yeah. Is this something that you know, you're know you okay with? Mm -hmm. And if not, like be on, like lay those things on the table. Yes. If there was something that Malachi didn't agree with me doing or whichever the case, let's talk about it, come to, the, to, to an understanding about it. And don't wait for your spouse to disagree. Come out openly and be like, hey, yeah. look, you know, she didn't, like, again, she didn't know about me going to meet with this person. I brung it to her. I didn't have right. to go to, go to, the, go to uh, uh, the, the coffee shop and then sit with the girl and then come back and be like, oh, yeah, I had a meeting today. Do you feel comfortable with that? No, I told her off rip. I'm like, yo, yeah. look, I'm having a meeting. I'm, I'm speaking at a conference coming up, mm -hmm. and a young lady want to sit down, a mm -hmm. single young lady. But I was like, yo, babe come with me to go meet with this young lady because mm -hmm. why number one, I want to even show her what it's like to add your spouse into this. So when right. she do get into a relationship, she knows, yo, let me bring my husband into this yeah. because I've seen that happen before with some other guy. Mm -hmm. You know, then my wife understands that, hey, now I don't have to tell my wife, yo, like if, if later on in ministry, if you ever have to sit down with a man, bring me. She's gonna always remember the fact that 
you know what number one i honor and respect my man so right. he's gonna be close he's gonna know about the the meeting or, or anything mm -hmm. like that yeah but then mainly it's, it's to not let the enemy get into that door but yeah I'm because sorry. there's no you're fine and because you're establishing a a home where there's no dark corners you yes. know like everything is out on the table and it's never gonna catch your spouse by surprise yes. you know like there's nothing worse than being in, in a situation where your spouse is the last but like you are the last person to find out and another thing too that i wanted to mention is you know you could ha having those um male or female friends you may think it is so innocent but the enemy is so subtle and it could be a case where let's say you and your husband are, are in, having a fight or something like that an argument and then you find yourself running to that person, yes, that um, opposite sex, telling so them about the, the conversation or whichever the case. And the yeah. next thing you know, you find that you find yourself agreeing with them and their understanding. But guess what? That's going to build up a wall between yes. you and your spouse when you should be going to them first Ooh. and establishing. Seriously, <laughs> you should be establishing that safe place in your home first and not going elsewhere. And so that's just implementing poor habits into your marriage. Mm -hmm. And and it, again, it could seem so innocent, but the enemy is so subtle. It could be, oh yeah, I knew Susan since elementary. It's nothing. Nope. But why are you Susan going? Susan gotta go. Right, and and that's just the way I see. You guys may there's maybe some people that because even myself when it came to setting certain certain boundaries months ago, I was just like really like i didn't see the point in it but now it's like i see the fruit of implementing those boundaries and yeah. so for some people it may be like wow you guys are really on an extreme but you'll be willing to do the extreme to have a loving and safe place yes. for your marriage yes. it won't seem like a compromise or it won't yeah. seem like a battle it's like i'm willing to do these things yeah. to protect my household yeah. like yeah. we're willing to just do if, those things for one another i'm sorry baby if it is a fight for you to not let mm -hmm. the opposite sex get into your personal bubble, mm -hmm. then nine times out of 10, you, there's a problem inside. Because yeah. for me, even long ago, if that conversation would have came up, we'd be like, bro, what? Like, what the heck? I'm not like, nah, like, you insecure. Like, I ain't doing that. Like, uh, I'm a tech. Nah, this work, you know, this business, uh, mm -hmm. all of that weird stuff. But it's like, like she said, this is not to like set no crazy strict religious rules around <laughs> no. like you better not talk to no one or you're gonna go into hell no that's not what we're saying right. but we want to create this channel is literally we are trying our best through the holy spirit to help relationships really grow yes. and thrive and be pure yeah. holy beautiful we know the divorce rate is 50 percent or a little higher right now and a lot of those are coming from christians just saying because we don't understand how to really do relationships. And this topic is not talked about when it comes to the opposite sex. Right. We need to talk about it because that is what I'm telling you, even when it comes to wandering eyes, there's so yeah. much topics to get into mm -hmm. to keep your marriage bed safe. Yeah. I shouldn't have to walk in a house like, ooh, I can't, I, I can't really even love my wife because I didn't tell her. I text um, a, a, a man, Amanda or, or right. Banana, Manana, whatever her name, <laughs> any name, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have to you guys make it your goal not to accuse people not to be like who who's, who's that are you texting any woman lately who right. have you been texting right. this is not what that video for we're not trying to stir up strife in your home no. or in your marriage or in your relationship but what we are trying to do is for you personally mm -hmm. to check yourself yeah. so you can be vulnerable and let your spouse know like yo you know what you know we've been fighting a lot we've been arguing a lot you know, we've been having a lot of disagreements or, or, or we, we, we say we want a great marriage. We say we want to get into a great engagement. We mm -hmm. say we want to set the pace and the tone for other couples and yeah. our future kids. Let's just start being open. You know, there's yeah. a lot of marriages out there and a lot of relationships even mm -hmm. who are hiding so much stuff. And then yeah. you find out years later. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yo, just bring it all out on the table just because be when you do that, now. you're so free. So now I can walk around, sorry, baby. Now I can walk around mm -hmm. in full understanding that 
my wife can trust me right. i can trust her when her phone ring i'm not thinking if it's johnny <laughs> bonnie or tani i'm not thinking that when my phone rings she's not like is that sometimes uh, i even forget like the code he's just like here have all of it and i'm just like no why because yeah. we've established that trust with one another mm -hmm. we are open so with open one another right and so it's like those negative areas they don't even pop up it's yeah. because we're implementing those those values and yeah. those boundaries yeah. and it all builds trust it, it's yeah. creating a safe home a safe place for yeah. one another yeah you know? It's a beautiful thing, man, because yeah. even when the devil went, you guys are great people, but there's an enemy prowling around like a lion ready to devour our marriage, your union, your yeah. relationship. He's, you know how many couples he probably stopped from getting married when they were supposed to get married mm -hmm. because of little stuff like this? Yep. We are trying to properly equip people or pass out the tools to people mm -hmm. so they can work on their relationship. So yeah. when they get into marriage or when they're already in marriage, I don't care if you've been married for 36 years and you're watching this video, thank <laughs> you for watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs> but if you are watching this video, still be like, yo, you know what? The marriage been seeming a little, you know, a little dry. Let's just start being open. Maybe it's some hidden yeah. stuff in there, you know. And have that conversation. Yes, have you that know? conversation. Is there anything that like is making you uncomfortable? And, and ladies too. Like I've I've come to Malachi before, and it was just like, oh my god, if I tell him this, I don't yeah. want to seem like an insecure woman or whatever yeah. the case. It's not even about that. It's just being honest with your husband, mm -hmm. letting him know what's up, and and the way that you even your response was just like so loving, yeah. and yeah. it was just awesome, you know. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the enemy will try to just throw those thoughts at you and be like oh well you're gonna come your husband's gonna think you are insecure women and yeah, this no, and that no 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 her opinion matters if, if something's right. bothering her then if and, and for me to say i'm a man of god mm -hmm. but i don't respond in you know a man of god way and right. love and patience and kindness and gentleness as she's my delicate little flower <laughs> you know if i don't respond like that then nine times out of ten i'm faking yeah, I can't say I'm a man of God and then be like, why you why you ask me those questions? What you think I'm you think I'm cheating? Like no. It it boils you it always boils you down to again, love, protecting your marriage, protecting your future marriage, honoring, honoring, honoring. You know, Peter actually says, you know, honor your wives yeah. for your prayers are be hindered if you don't if you don't honor your wives and your prayers will be hindered who prayers our prayers as a union right. we may be praying for the increase praying for the home praying for the job praying for the the business the company the ministry but he's like you're not even honoring your wife so i can't even release that on you until you start honoring your wife because if you're not honoring your wife now when you start elevating whoo it might get terrible. Right. And what what does honor mean? You, you a little a little glimpse yeah, of honor. Yeah, because that when you honor someone, it's showing the highest level of respect. Yes. The highest level of respect, yeah. and so that should be both ways: respecting yeah. one another, honoring one another, yeah. and and that is the highest level of respect. And so I just I, I truly believe that's just another lens that we do honor our spouse in. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to those things that are going to benefit our marriage and mm. and so on. Mm. I so. thank you for honoring me. <laughs> <laughs> for respecting me and that's why i marry her because she's a great woman she's a powerful woman she's a beautiful woman but she know who she is and who she married when we marry someone we are choosing one person in our last video i think uh we, we talked about you know when you say yes you're, you're saying, saying no, no to everyone, everyone else. else so when i married her mm -hmm. i said no to all of my old friends I'm not saying I abandoned them, put them in a shack, right. in a shed. Right, well, run into them in the street. And You'd be like, oh my gosh, no. Like, no. Like, hey, how no. are you? Keep it moving. But the moral of everything is, you know, out of this video, ask the Lord what, it's, what is for me and what is not for me. Right. What is for me and what is not for me. But, but we believe that each and every one of you individuals can learn something from this video yeah. as we learn so much from this video. Absolutely. And again, this channel was all about uplifting, encouraging, inspiring other people yeah. into the word of God. So go in the word of God and see what it looks like to honor your husband, honor your mm -hmm. wife have friendships opposite sex friendships what does that look like in a bible yeah and um things of that sort and, and be bold i feel like yeah. being bold like you could be bold about your honesty you could be bold about your boundaries yeah. you can be bold about 
you know, implementing these things. Yeah. You know, it is okay. Go the extreme. Do the extreme for your marriage. Yeah, do whatever it takes as long as it takes to get your marriage to be on fire, mm -hmm. to get it to be radical, to get it to be pure, yeah. love, holy. Jesus went the extreme. Yeah. He died on a cross for our sins to show I love you and I chose you. I did this for you. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to die for you. Put your name in that. He died for Malachi. He died for Courtney. He died for you guys. Mm -hmm. Right? So in our marriage, if this is the illustration of Christ in the church, then we are going to do the outmost extreme mm -hmm. to keep this union together. Yeah. Because it's a covenant that cannot be broken. The reason why it can't be broken because we won't break it. Yeah. So we love you guys so, so much. much. And um, I guess we can pray for him really quickly. Go ahead. So there is Jesus. Lord, we just thank you so much for just gracing us with the wisdom that you gave us. We know it's not coming from us, but it's coming directly from you. Lord, we just thank you for just gracing us with this YouTube platform to even pour into your people. Father God, and we may not get it right all the time, but the, the goal is not perfection, it's progression. And the closer we get to you, the further we get from the enemy and the more aware we are of the enemy and his stupid little schemes. So, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that um, each individual that was listening to this video, and even when we listen to it later, Father God, you just stir something up in our hearts. You set us free from something. You, 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 you take any hidden things that was in their heart, and you just bring it to the surface. And maybe there's unforgiveness. Maybe there's shame. Maybe there's guilt. Maybe there's condemnation. We just ask that you take it from them and then you just give them your peace. You just give them your love. You just give them your mercy. You just show them your grace. You just reveal your heart to them and let them know that nothing can separate you. You know, a lot of people from this video may have felt convicted, but that is a very good thing because that means that there was something wrong, some impurities that was going on in their heart that can be taken away. And you won't take it away in anger, but you will take it away in love and replace it with something that would benefit them, their marriage or their future marriage. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for just you know, saving our souls and, and saving souls through this YouTube ministry, Father God. And we just ask that this video hit the people that it need to hit. We don't care if it get 10 views and non people lives get changed, then that's great. If it get 50,000 views, but no lives were changed, we don't even want it, Father God. This video, th this channel is all about exalting Jesus as you bring your people in. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we pray that these beautiful people got a great message in this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we love you guys so much. We yes. are praying for you guys. And next week, get ready for our video. We per post every single Thursday. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. So like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Yeah, we, we suck at saying that. But um, we love you, you guys to. so much. Yes, we love you guys so much. We are praying for you guys. Thank you guys for getting us to 400 subscribers again. Thank you guys for showing so much love. Yeah. And we are, we are excited. We are excited for you guys <laughs> to join the family. So we pray for you guys. We love you guys. And have a blessed rest of your week. And remember to implement <laughs> this in every step of your walk to Jesus Christ. Come on. But we love you guys and see you soon.